Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kylie and uh, I'm presenting on my documentary films, Golden Days and Hearts of Gold, exploring love and aging in Baltimore and Singapore through anthropological filmmaking. Uh, my mentors are Dr. Clara Hahn from the Department of Anthropology and Dr. Bernadette Wigenstein from the Department of Film and Media Studies. Uh, unfortunately, she can't be here today because she is on sabbatical leave in Vienna for the year. Uh, so just a quick outline of my presentation. Uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my own background. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of the interview questions I asked my interviewees, uh, talk a brief bit about each of the two films and the lessons learned and acknowledgements. So uh, my own background, I am a triple major in public health, anthropology, and Italian. And I decided that I wanted to do a project that really combined all of my research interests from the three majors. So in public health, I focused on the physical and mental health of older adults. And for anthropology, I was interested in the subjectivities of love and how love is really expressed in the singularity of a life. And finally, in my sophomore year, I took a Italian film class with Dr. Wegenstein, um, and I assisted her for a semester on her own documentary film on breast cancer called The Good Breast. And this inspired me to really start to think about making my own documentary. Um, so at the same time, I'm also a public service commission scholar with the government of Singapore and I wanted to pay tribute to the nation's 50th year of independence, which we celebrated last year in 2015. Uh, I was very much inspired by the interviews we conducted with the founding, father, uh, the founding fathers of the nation. And so as they recounted their life experiences and their life stories, um, they also talked about the struggles to establish Singapore's independence. So I was very much inspired by that. So briefly, these are some of the interview questions which, we, uh, which I posed to my interviewees. So all my interviewees were above the age of 60. Um, the youngest was 60 and the oldest was 96. Uh, so we began talking about their childhood and um, the activities they did as a child and also the neighborhoods they grew up in. Um, so very briefly, um, in Golden Days, I actually filmed in Baltimore and we talked, and all three women I talked to uh, were born and bred in Baltimore. So we talked a lot about how Baltimore has really changed over the last 50 years. So one of them told us a story about how during the weekends she would put on her highest pair of heels, go downtown with her girlfriends in a town car, and dance with the soldiers until the end of the night. And she's like expressing a little bit of regret about how people nowadays can't really do that anymore because it's a little dangerous. Yeah, um, so after that we talked about questions on love and marriage, so how they fell in love and whether they could fall, again, uh, fall in love again now that they are of older age. It was interesting to see how their conceptions of love also changed after the death of their spouses and also like how um, the people in Baltimore would express love in a very different way than the people in Singapore. So for example, um, the people in Baltimore express love in a more verbal manner. I love you, he said this to me, she said that to me. But the people in Singapore don't express love, uh, the older people in Singapore don't really express love in a very verbal manner. So one of my interviewees, he's been married to his wife for 75 years, and they've never said I love you. Like never, not even when they got married. I, instead they expressed love in a very nonverbal manner through activities of daily life and through the acts of really just being there for each other, not complaining, not uh, leaving each other through the harsh times. So that was very interesting to compare how um, cultural differences of love. So as all my interviewees had children, we discussed notions of parenthood and we asked them um, to their the reactions of being like a first time parent and how that's really changed over the years. And finally, I ended every interview really asking them to reflect on their well-lived lives and we discuss one really good thing and one really bad thing that has happened to them. And I asked them to express a sentence or two to the camera on what it means to live life and what advice they would actually offer to our generation today. So with Golden Days, I started filming it uh, in DePaul House in Southeast Baltimore with another Woodrow Wilson fellow, Chabin. Um, so DePaul House is run by Catholic Charities and we interviewed these three women, uh, Annette, Barbara, and Rhoda, on the topics we just discussed before this, and they were really wonderful. And since, um, as I mentioned, DePaul is run by Catholic Charities, we talked a lot about how faith really played a large role in influencing uh, each of their lives. So I have a little excerpt about Rhoda talking about her daughter's difficulty in conceiving children. My daughter, Cindy, could not have children, and she worked in labor and delivery at St. Agnes. 
and um, well, she wanted children badly, and of course, bringing them into the world. And uh, she and her husband had a private adoption twice. She had one la lady in very bad labor one time, and the lady said, Cindy, did you have a hard time having your children? She said, yes, I did. She says, Mom, I meant getting the money together because <laughs> it costs quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. But they're two lovely people. They t I don't know who was more blessed, my daughter and her husband or the two kids. Next, I filmed Hearts of Gold when I returned to Singapore last summer at the height of what we call the SG50 celebration. So we turned uh, 50 years old, August 9th, 2015. So we are almost 51. Um, and whereas um, the one in Baltimore focused a lot more on each woman's individual lives, I really tried to tie in the individual stories uh, of the interviewees I filmed in Singapore with the social progress of Singapore over the last 50 years. So we tracked them from the genesis of the country after uh, British and Malaysian colonialism, World War II, building a nation from the ground up. And all the interviewees were actually related to me in some way. So an old family friend, uh, this is Jane, an English teacher at my high school, uh, the 96 and 94 year old parents of my former math tutor, and a friend of a family friend. So um, the friend of the family friend is one of the wealth wealthiest botanists in Singapore, and he also works as an anesthesiologist. Uh, yeah, so here are some of the pictures from the shoot, and I'm gonna talk a, uh, pretty briefly about each of their stories. So on the left, there's Jane, and Jane actually has 11 cats and 11 dogs, all of which she adopted from the streets, so they're all strays. Uh, so she saves dogs and cats, which is really nice. Um, so she actually had to move from Singapore to Johor Bahru in Malaysia so that she could buy a big enough house to actually take care of all her dogs and cats. Yeah, so she, used to, she is a top-ranking insurance saleswoman with AIG, and now that she's retired, she spends all of her time taking care of her dogs and cats. And on the right, um, they're Mr. and Mrs. Lowe. They're the parents of my former math tutor, uh, 96 and 94. They've been married for 75 years. Um, so despite their age, they're actually still very active. Um, they have no physical problems. They walk about two miles every morning to and from Chinatown to do grocery shopping. Yeah, so they're cool. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you a short excerpt where Mr. Lowe talks about his experience surviving World War II under the Japanese occupation. Yang 變成韓國 and as a member of a younger generation, because we, we've lived in such a prosperous time in Singapore, uh, Singapore is a place with no natural disasters, and we've experienced uh, very high economic and social prosperity over the last 50 years. So I thought it was important for us to really reflect back on the hardships of the war and that our ancestors went through that we never really got a chance to see. 
So briefly, I'm gonna talk about the lessons that uh, I learned from filming these two documentaries. So the films actually try to show that in a complex and multifaceted life that these elders have, there's actually not just one single coherent biography marked by identifiable milestones. So like, there's not really something like, oh, every, guy, every person goes through childhood, love, marriage. So they all experience these in different ways. And multiple institutions and multiple people are folded into a life. Um, also, uh, especially in Asia, a lot of the times we conceive of old people as putting all their hopes and dreams onto their descendants. So the stereotypical thing would be like, oh, the old, the old person would just talk about, oh, my grandchild did this or my daughter did that and I'm so proud of them. But actually, um, through these documentaries, we've actually found out that the aspirations of elders go beyond the successes of their descendants and they have their own life, their own dreams, and they're very reflective on what's been going on in their own life. Secondly, um, by interviewing elders who uh, were some way in one way or another related to me, especially in Singapore, the film was a meditation on the way that our lives intersect and don't intersect. So for example, in my capacity as a student, uh, a family friend and a member of a younger generation, uh, what aspects of their lives are revealed to me, what aspects are not. So because I knew them in some way, um, I was trying to see about like how um, you usually reveal some part of your life in public, but uh, other parts of your life, you have to really um, go deep into reflection, deep into introspection for you to really get there. And lastly, um, I felt like as a member of your younger generation, it's important for us to preserve these life stories of the elders, the importance of ethnography, for example, which is the, the method we use in anthropology, and exploration of different film techniques, and to experiment with chronology and narration to show that there's not really just one way that you can tell a life story, but there are many different ways that you can tell a life story. Um, and finally, um, it was an introduction for me to filmmaking because prior to this, I've only had very, very little experience behind the camera. I had to learn how to use a camera, had to learn how to set up a tripod without it falling over, um, and had to learn how to use iMovie and all the editing stuff. Uh, it was hard, but it was really worth it, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions about filmmaking techniques for all the future Wilsons. Um, yeah, uh, this is the end of my presentation, and I would like to thank the Woodrow Wilson Fellowship for their generous financial and support, uh, financial support, especially Amy, who has been such a great mentor and so supportive. Uh, my mentors, Dr. Hahn and Dr. Wagenstein, for their guidance and their mentorship. And my editor, Jack, and uh, as usual, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, it's my email. Thank you so much for your attention.